Thank you for coming along to the seminar and, and thank you for the opportunity to, to talk to you at, at this time of the day. And uh, what I will try to do is give you an overview of some experiments with porous materials. And, and so there's a lot of new interest in porous materials. There are a lot of every, every week there's a new class of porous materials which are made by synthesis. And, and for electrochemists, that's very interesting because in porous materials, there are a lot of complicated processes where you have ion exchange, you have electron exchange, you can absorb other molecules. And so there's a lot of interest in, in sort of making uh, sort of thin films on electrodes for applications in catalysis and maybe in fuel cells, but also applications in analysis. And at the, later in the talk, I will also say a little bit about membranes because I like not just the idea of putting layers on electrodes, but also working with membranes and sort of applications of membranes are quite interesting. So in, in this talk, I have two materials, this MOFs and the PIMs. Now, there are all kinds of there's MOFs and QOMs and PIMs and every, every week a new material. The MOF, the MOF material, you probably come across this metallorganic frameworks and they are nice materials because they are crystalline materials. They are produced under usually hydrothermal conditions and, and they have actually a crystal structure so it's possible to use crystallography and really see whoops, that's, that's me, sorry, <laughs> to see how the pores look like and, and where the molecules have gone and what's happening in the material. So that's a very attractive feature of these, of these MOF materials. And then the PIM materials, it's a sort of more new development. They are polymers of intrinsic microporosity. And so they are polymers like this. Yeah, they look like this polymer, but they are, this polymer here is PET. It's very non-permeable, non, non so gas will not go through this polymer. But the, the polymer with intrinsic microporosity, it looks the same, but it's completely transparent. So gases, small molecules, can very easily go through the polymer. And so we are interested in the electrochemistry and how ions can move. Now, I hope this will go away. Your battery health is not happy. Uh, <laughs> maybe plug in the power supply. Okay, yep. So just to start, just to say a little bit about Bath. Bath is a very small town and uh, it's, it's actually in the west, in the southwest of, uh, in the south of, of the country of the UK. You've got, Scot you've got Scotland up here, there's Wales is here, Ireland is here, and London is down there. And so you can see we are not far from London. It's about one hour by train from London. And Actually, it's, it's um, quite a small town, much smaller than Sao Carlos. Uh, it's a historical town. There are lots of old buildings and, and lots of tourists. And the university is just outside on a, on a campus. And it's also a little bit smaller than the, than the Federal University of Sao Carlos. It's about 15,000 students. And in chemistry, we have about 40 staff. And we have about 130 students every year sort of starting the course. So it's, it's um, smaller than, 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 than the Federal uh, University of, of Sao Carlos. But um, we have interests in, in quite similar areas and I'm very happy to collaborate with Lucia and, and to be able to, to visit you. Okay, let's start a little bit. I try to, to focus on, on the main idea. The problem with electrochemistry is I always show these curves, the cyclic photomograms, and, and people just fall, fall asleep and, and don't want to know about this. And so I try to say very sort of simple, two ideas what I'm interested in here. There are two kinds of processes in pores. And so one type of process is this one, a flux causing alkaline environment. So if I start off, if I take one electron and then I have to balance the charge, it's charge neutrality, I end up with hydroxide in the pore. And that's a really important process. And it happens every time you have a pore and you flow current. Because the protons, uh, the, pro oops, the protons are very fast. The diffusion coefficient is very high. And so they, they move first. And so this is why this happens. We're getting this. And another similar process, almost the same process, which is shown here. We have electrons moving out and protons moving out and are left behind with an amine. 
And so this process will be important in the last part of the talk where we have the polymer. And in the polymer, we are creating this kind of region of amine. And actually, it becomes like a resistor. So we have a flux causing a depletion. And we, we get some kind of diode effect from this. So these two are very similar effects. And that's really the, the key message of the talk. So it's OK to walk out. And, and it just, that's, the key, that's the main point. The rest is just detail. OK, the overview of the talk. I start off just a bit on, on pore processes and effects in pores. Uh, I will talk about MOFs and some iron-based MOFs and assemblies, materials. How do they react electrochemically? How is it possible to, to get electrons in and out and ions in and out of these materials? Maybe it's not possible at all. We try, to, we try to synthesize specific materials. We have these post-synthetically modified MOFs, very carefully prepared materials where we put ferrocene into the cavities in order to learn about the, the behavior of these materials. We also put uh, absorbed, absorbed dyes, alizarin red and methylene blue, into the, into the material. And then at the end, I talk a little bit about the, the PIMS and ionic diodes in the, in the last part. OK, just to start, when we, when we started this work on these porous materials, there was a funding for this, and there was a, a reason. And so I, I thought I'd start off with this, because as a background, it's quite interesting. There's a lot of interest in, in sort of, it's called the Grand Challenge, the utilization of CO2. And there was a big consortium call for, for ideas for how to bind CO2 and convert CO2. And so our, our idea was we would sort of use a material which is very good at binding CO2. And, and the work by Omayagi, especially, and by sort of other groups, shows that metallorganic frameworks are very good at binding CO2. And so if we can start off with a porous material like CO2, we can bind already the, the, the CO2 into the moth. And then we ha all we have to do is just reduce it. You can't get away. It's in the pore. All we have to do is put electrons in, and we should get nice products. So maybe we can make methanol, or maybe we can make methane, maybe we can make uh, formate from, from CO2 by reduction. And it was quite a big project, and so we are trying to, to combine CO2 absorption with catalysis. The people involved, there was a big synthesis group, Andy Burroughs, making new MOF materials. And then we have the heterogeneous catalysis group, uh, mainly uh, Sophia Pasco and Matthew Jones, looking at sort of fischer tropsch catalysis, basically, reduction without electrochemistry. Then the electrochemistry, photoelectrochemistry, this is where I'm involved. And this is basically what I'll tell you about today. We also have a, a bio-photoelectrochemical process. The idea was to use algae and to use bioorganism to do this kind of chemistry. And we have a life cycle ass assessment group. And so the idea was that life cycle assessment would then tell us which is the best one of these methods and, and which is the one which is most likely to be useful in, in a commercial environment. Now, going back to the MOFs, uh, in the literature, there's a lot of interesting new MOF materials. And just to, to show a little bit, there's the work by Kitagawa. And, and so in the group by Kitagawa in, in Kyoto, they, they sort of do layer by layer deposition on electrodes. So they try to make molecules which build up layers on the electrochemistry to modify the surface in order to create pockets, to create films which are really nice and active. And there's also electrochemistry of metal organic frameworks. Um, this is a particle approach. You can just put particles onto an electrode and investigate the behavior. This is by Antonio Dominic Carbo in, in Valencia in Spain. And he really pioneered this area to investigate the MOF and to learn about the processes. But there's even older work here. If you look at, let's, let's make this more general. If you look at work by Ogura on, on Prussian blue, um, Prussian blue is also able to absorb CO2. And it's able to sort of work in a propylene carbonate uh, environment to, to actually give reduction products. So this idea of using a porous material actually already was, was shown in 1999 that, that there's, there's a possibility to do this. So when we started, we wanted to look at uh, simple, as simple as possible model systems. And it's possible to actually buy MOFs now commercially. Aldrich, Sigma Aldrich sells 
basolite F300. There are different types of basolites, different metal containing morphs. This is a, uh, an iron benzoate system and it's a really nice crystalline material with pores between the iron and the benzoates. And iron is nice for electrochemistry because we have iron three and we should be able to switch iron three to iron two. And we can sort of see how the electrons then go into the crystal and how they react in this material. And uh, the person who did the work is, is Firoz Babu from Karakudi in India. He visited and he started this experiment. And so the first thing we always do is electrochemistry, just cyclic photometry. So we, we just take an electrode, we put the particles onto the surface. You can see this here, there are the particles on the surface. And we try different types of electrodes and we, we look at the behavior in different environments. And a few interesting observations. First, we see a signal. So we can actually observe the ion 3, ion 2 signal. And that was very encouraging. So we can actually see the reactivity of this material. It's different on different electrodes. On carbon, we don't really see anything, but on platinum, we see quite nice signals. That's already a bit strange, but it's actually quite well known that uh, iron 2, iron 3 has a slow electron transfer on carbon, so it wasn't so much of a surprise. But the real surprise was then, then if we change the amount of acid, it's also changing the signal. If I take a little bit more acid, nitric acid, the signal is getting bigger. And that really sort of shows that this is not a solid state process. What we see is basically iron 3 is reduced to iron 2, but it's actually reduced in solution. So with the acid, there's always a small concentration of iron 3 in solution, and that's the active component. So this electrochemistry here was a bit disappointing, but actually this electrochemistry we observed was, was the iron just outside in solution, and it's coupled to the solid. And, and so we can explain these kind of processes with a CE mechanism. It's a chemical step, the dissolution, followed by the electrochemical step, which is the electron transfer. So it's a bit disappointing, and it's already telling us there's something complicated with these materials. We also see catalytic signals, but that's interesting as well, because the catalytic signal here, this is the signal for the oxidation of water. And so we could think, ah, great, we can use our MOF as a porous material to oxidize water. But actually, this only works after reduction. And so we found that in the electrochemistry, first we have to go negative, that releases iron two, and then we go positive and we see our catalysis. And basically our catalyst is hematite or is hydrous oxide. So it's indirect. So we have a little bit of catalyst which forms in the reduction oxidation cycle. So our MOF material isn't actually the active component. It's just a precursor which releases the material. So it's not directly catalytic. So it's all very interesting, but it's more and more difficult. We can't really get the electrons into this material. So we try to come up with other materials and we actually found our own MOF, if you like. And this is uh, phytate, iron-3 phytate. Phytate is this molecule here. It's, it's a natural plant material. It's a sort of leftover from, from plants. It's very abundant in nature. It's, um, it's an uh, inositol hexaphosphate. So it's a highly charged material and it's very insoluble with metal cations. So you can build up layers we can use an electrode, we can dip into iron three, then dip into phytate and dip into iron three. You can build up every time one, nano la one nanometer layer and we can sort of make a film on the electrode surface and we can see the film by AFM, we can see how it grows. And um, so we have about one nanometer per layer and then we can look at the electrochemistry. It's a porous disordered structure in this case, but the electrochemistry is quite different because now, this layer actually is, is active and it's not just the surface and it's not falling apart. This material is actually completely active and we can switch between iron three and iron two. And we can do this in water and different solutions or even in ethanol. In ethanol, it was possible to also switch, have PF6 or have perchlorate in the solution. So with this material, we are able to get a stable signal and we get the ion exchange. So what's different? Uh, I think the main difference is that here we have a self-healing material. Yeah, this kind of iron polyphosphate, even if it breaks open, it will actually fall back and heal again. 
And the nice MOF material, once it breaks open, it will not fall back. It doesn't re-precipitate. And so that's the difference. So the, the sort of better materials are the ones which can self-heal. And at the moment, there's no MOF I'm aware of that actually is able to self-heal and, and to sort of keep on reacting and exchanging ions. In order to, to look at other more conventional, more interesting MOF materials, I have two examples here. This has uh, been synthesized in the group by Andy, Andy Boros, and they use uh, a really nice trick to make materials electroactive. So they use post-synthetic modification. This is a classic UMCM1 structure. It's a MOF structure, and you have the different kinds of pores into these, into these, uh, in these structures. You can see these are, these are zinc-4 clusters, and these are the benzoate ligands here. So they